Everyone is not called to be a foster parent, and that's okay. But everyone can do something in touching the life of a child who's been harmed, who's vulnerable and in need. Dr. Ford, thank you so much uh, for being with me today and the Focus Pastor, uh, really to talk to pastors um, about the month of May. And May is a kind of an important month. Uh, it is Foster Care Awareness Month. It is. And I'm eager to talk about that and how the church should be involved with that. Um, you are a colleague of mine here at Focus on the Family, um, and you've been in this this work for over 30 years, first with the state of Colorado. Mm -hmm. uh, you were working in the Division of Child Wef Welfare, mm -hmm. and you oversaw foster care and adoptive programs with them. Mm -hmm. And now you oversee foster care and adoptive programs with Focus on the Family. Yes. And this is a big deal. So I, I think, first of all, you're well equipped to answer this question. Tell us what's going on in the United States today with the issue of foster care? You know, it's so important that our communities are aware that there are children in their backyards who are living in unsafe um, conditions with their um, bio families. And it's the job of government to, when they hear that a child is unsafe, to look at ways to either keep that child safely at home, or if they can't, to work with law enforcement and the court to courts to have those children removed and put in a safe place. That happens every single day to the tune of that there's almost 400,000 children today who are in the foster care system, some of them living with a relative who stepped up um, to become a kinship placement, others who are living with individuals that have been recruited and trained to be a temporary placement or long-term placement for those children. Yeah, so the goal, I mean, is safety for these children, and there's a variety of reasons why they may not be safe, um, but to the tune of 400,000 children in the foster care system today. That's correct. Um, that's a massive number, and I think it's caught national attention that we would even devote the month of May to bring an awareness to it. Um, and so maybe, what I'd like to do is ask you a little bit of, expand further on what is the state's responsibility? What does the state do um, for kids in foster care? The state's responsible for having recruiting individuals who would provide a safe place for children. And that recruitment doesn't just mean fill out an application and then come and then we give you the kid, the child is placed with you. It's more than that. It's about doing background checks mm -hmm. of those who are the adults who live in that home. Those families are responsible for doing training. There's a home assessment that's completed by someone who's trained to do that home assessment. There's the requirement of shots and physicals of the individuals who are gonna care for those children. When they say we're removing a child because of safety issues, they need to know that the home that the child is being placed in is a safe place. And so there are many steps that someone who's interested in temporarily caring for a child has to go through so that their home is deemed as a safe and appropriate placement for a child or a sibling group. So the state's doing a good work. They're doing a good thing, uh, recruiting people to bring temporary care and sometimes more permanent care, equipping them. Uh, so recruiting, equipping, but that isn't all that's needed. Uh, the church needs to step in and you've been a strong advocate for how the church could come alongside the state um, and really come alongside these children. And so tell me a little bit about Where's the church's role and, and how is it different from the state? Well, the church's role is to be that hospitality station, mm -hmm. um, that first aid station, I call it, for children and for the families who those children come from. Um, to be that safe place that will pray, nurture, care for, and hopefully help that child um, while they're in that temporary placement, know that their family is getting the support and the care that they need by their foster parents and the church praying for their birth mom, their birth dad, their grandparent, um, so that they can hopefully go back home. If nothing else, the church believes in redemption. 
And so we who have all fallen short at some place in our journey in life, to know that a child had to be removed from their home for a temporary basis, to know that they could potentially go back home again because their family got the support and care that they needed so that their home could be safe again. I think that that's the awesome opportunity for the church to step in to the messiness of child welfare, of abuse and neglect, and to be that healing station, not only for the child, but for that family as well. Yeah, I mean, coming alongside um, foster parents, Mm -hmm. coming alongside the parents who've had their kids taken away, but even being the first recruits when the government's saying, we need more foster care uh, parents, uh, foster parents, we th- the church can step up and become that. Uh, you've talked, I've heard you talk about four different ways that uh, the church can come alongside um, this need these for these children. And could you maybe dive into those and, and how Focus on the Family helps equip uh, folks to be one of those four areas of care? I think the first way that the church can be involved is to pray. Prayer changes things. And so um, when the church is praying, there's an opportunity to hear the wisdom of God, the timing of God, and the how of God to step in. Everyone is not called to be a foster parent, and that's okay. But everyone can do something in touching the life of a child who's been harmed, who's vulnerable Mm -hmm. and in need. I think, I think the second way that the church can be involved is for, yes, am I, it's my family called to serve another a child um, who needs to be in a temporary placement. And if God has called me to do that, then I'm going to, uh, you know, I honor God and do that. I think the third way that the church can be involved is to provide respite support. That respite, um, I, I sometimes call it um, that extra arms, the extra hands, the extra feet um, for a a family who is called to be a foster parent, okay, they might need a time to step away. A date night. Oh, yes. That here's that respite care provider. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a family emergency. We need to go out of town. The court's not giving permission or it's not appropriate for that child to travel with our family to that family emergency. A respite care family Mm -hmm. would be that temporary an additional temporary family who could provide services and care for that child until the foster parents come back in town um, and and have that child back in their home. Respite care providers are needed every single day. All of us need a break. I think the fourth way is for um, those people who do acts of kindness. And that, those acts of kindness, if you can cook, if you can clean, if you can play chess, if you can um, do laundry, if you can come and, and you and your sons or you and your, your daughters or the youth group comes and, and does the lawn, takes care of the lawn or removes the snow, um, comes and, and, does, and watches the kids so that there could be date night or there could be date breakfast or there could be, you know what, we're just going to have a weekend getaway. We're going to have a spa opportunity or or maybe dad's going to go play golf and um or tennis and or pickleball and 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 the wife is going to go and and have you know daytime with her girlfriends that time of just getting away and exhaling and and not having kids underfoot and not having to think i've got i'm on all the time and foster parents are on all the time and so having those extra hands and feet those acts of kindness make all the difference in the world. Yeah, you're talking about really a, a fourfold approach that somebody, anybody in the church can, can lean into one of these areas. You bet. Yeah, I wanna ask you a couple more things here, but how many, and do we know, how many foster families are there right now? I mean, 400,000 children, are there enough foster families for these children? Josh, you ask an excellent question. There's not, okay. Just that's just the plain truth. Every state, every county, every community needs more foster families. There's not enough. And I can tell you why there's not enough. There are single children who come in, and and that's the only child that's being removed. There are children who come in as a sibling group, sibling groups of three and Mm -hmm. four and five, and yes, even seven large. Families have to have a home large enough to take in a sibling group. And so sibling groups are being broken up. Mm -hmm. Two are going here, three are going there. 
nobody wants to be separated from their sibling unless it's not safe. Yeah. Okay. And so to think that um, the reason why sibling groups are being broken up is because there are not enough foster families that can take and take care of large sibling groups. Yeah. And it's a shame when you think that even a sibling group of two that they have to go into different foster homes because there's not a home that has enough beds and bed space to take them in. And so that's why our, our prayer here at Focus, God send the families who would love on these children, send them not, with just, not just with a heart to love and care for them, but send them with the right size of a home to take and, and so that sibling groups can be placed together. What happens when there's not, when you know, the state takes in a kid or a sibling group and there's an immediate need and they can't find a foster uh, family? in the night, what, what happens to those children? That's um, not a nice story to paint. Um, and that story happens to be the truth. Um, kids sleep in offices, in sleeping bags. They sleep on the cot in an office. They might be um, taken to a hotel with a caseworker who is staying up all night while that child is sleeping in a hotel. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, some of our teens are taken to a detention center. They've done nothing wrong, mm. but there's not a safe place to keep them. There's not a foster family who has a, a, a space for them. And so they're taken to a detention center and placed there until they can find a foster home. Mm. The heart of the Lord is that these children be cared for. Um, I know your heart is that. Uh, I know Focus on the Family's heart is that. And we're talking to church leaders and pastors what is Focus doing to come alongside the church to help uh, prepare them? And how are we a service to them? You know, Focus on the Family has developed a new website. It's called waitnomore.org. And it is a one-stop shop, one-stop shop place for individuals, for churches, um, for ministries to learn and glean information about entering the foster care system. What can they do? And so the four parts that I talked about, all of that information is on there. How to get started, how to involve my church, um, how can I get training for my church? How do I get training for myself as someone who's interested in being a foster parent? All of those resources are there at our waitnomore.org um, website. Just we also offer people an opportunity for to see videos, to read articles, yeah. and to, if they would like to chat with me, they can send their questions in directly to me, and we would get back with them within a, you know a reasonable time frame yeah. to be able to respond to their questions. Yeah, I mean, you're so starting with just let's get some questions answered, mm -hmm. and coming alongside with practical resources just to equip and educate. Um, those who have a heart for this. Mm -hmm. um, you're doing one other thing though, I'm pretty excited about. And uh, I want you to tell churches just one other way they can get involved um, with these suitcase uh, bundles that you have created to, uh, and, and why you created them. Talk a little bit about what are these suitcase bundles and why you started this program? You know, um, <laughs> we, are, we are so pleased to have our suitcase bundle program. And that's something that Focus on the Family has been able to do with the gracious gifts of our donors. Um, but it also allows us to work with local churches for that local church to be the hero to the children and the youth in their community. Boy, we want to be able to place a brand new duffel bag suitcase, a Bible and a stuffed bear animal in each of those suitcases. Why those things? Every child needs comfort. Every child needs to have the opportunity to read the word or to have the word read to them. For the littles, we have our Adventures in Odyssey Bible. Cool. For the bigs, we have a teen study Bible. Um, and the, why a 30 inch duffel bag? Because whether a child is putting um, all their clothing in it or their clothing and their toys in it, we want them to have um, an opportunity to walk with dignity. Kids are removed um, from, from their birth homes, sometimes with throwing their things in a grocery bag or black trash bags. If you ask the ad average caseworker in the city, what, what two things do they carry in their car? A car seat, in case they're removing a small child, 
are black trash bags so that they have things for the kids to put their clothes in. No child, no child should be carrying their things in a black trash bag because our kids aren't trash. I don't care what they've lived through, what they've experienced. They deserve dignity yeah. and respect. And Focus on the Family through our suitcase bundle program tries to give those kids um, that. We want them to know that somebody cares for them. So on the inside of every single Bible, there's a, no a label. And on that label, there's a note written, a handwritten note by a caring volunteer, a church member, someone in a youth group, saying, giving a message to that child, you are somebody, that someone's praying for you, that they have purpose and destiny on their life. Yeah. And focus, that's Focus's gift to a community so that they can be a gift to a child. And a church can apply to host uh, a packing party. You bet. Right? And so how do they go about that? Boy, you know, on our website, again, our Wait No More website, they can go there and click on our suitcase bundle tab. And it says, you know, if you would like to sign up to host a suitcase packing party, please sign up here. And what do we do? We provide the brand new suitcase. We provide the, the uh, Bible and the bear. We just ask that they would have a place to be able to receive those items because they come on a pallet. Yep, yep. And, and that they use um, the resources of their community at their church to pack them up and then to distribute them to the local child welfare office, actually maybe even taking it to that foster home. Maybe they have foster families in their own church yeah. that those foster families could be um, recipients um, on behalf of the kids that are in their home. We wanna be a blessing to the child and we want the church to be the local hero in helping us to do that. That's so cool. It's, it's a very practical way uh, for a church to say, let's get some volunteers, pack some bags yes. that we know are going to bless kids mm -hmm. and then distribute them. You bet. So uh, we're going into the month of May. It is Foster Care Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. What is one more thing you want to say to all the pastors and church leaders listening today? Pastors, are you aware of how many foster families or kinship families that you have in your own church? Maybe families who have even adopted. They done foster care, and now they've adopted that child. Mm. We want you to take a few moments as you minister to your whole, the whole body of Christ to say a special prayer for those who are fostering in your church. They are local heroes. They are first responders. Please keep them in your prayers and encourage the body of Christ to love on them as they love on the children who have been hurt, who've been abused, who they're caring for in their home. Hey Pastor, thanks for watching this video. The Focus Pastor is here to encourage you, your family, and the church. So if you like this video, hit the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to our channel. You can also follow us on social media or check out our website.